Gary Cooper, and I'm here to talk about uh, my business idea, Mental Health Family Services. Okay. Uh, so, with new legislation, uh, me and my wife look to become one of the first outpatient clinics in the Twin Cities uh, that operates a psych uh, outpatient clinic. Um, we're going to do this, uh, obviously, like I said, with my wife, um, who's a graduate of Vanderbilt University, uh, where she earned her advanced practice nursing degree. And myself, uh, I would act as role of sort of a hospital administrator, uh, just making sure that we adhere to all the policies and uh, regulations and just handle different day-to-day -day management uh, issues that, go, that, that may go on. All right, so today I'm going to talk about the problem um, that we've identified, the mental illness problem, and some statistics here in Minnesota. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our solution, our proposed solution to this problem, and I'm going to discuss why we feel like the economy is set up for our success. All right, so mental illness is a it, it, it includes a variety of different illnesses, and uh, what we can do is uh, what we plan to do is to market uh, to specific communities. For instance, uh, I am a member of the Air Force Reserve, and one of the big uh, issues. Uh, uh, one of the common, uh, common mental illnesses uh, in colleges are anxiety, uh, eating disorders, or even depression. And so there may be some misconceptions about mental illnesses. Um, it's not just severe cases uh, where people can't uh, focus or function. Um, for instance, right now we could probably make a killing with all the anxiety that's going on in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, there's a market for it. <laughs> no, but uh, in all seriousness, it's a serious issue, and there are a lot of people that we can focus on. And just to give you some idea of uh, the kind of people that uh, that thrive uh, with mental illness, uh, they can be people we root for, such as Olympic athlete Michael Phelps, who who gets treated for uh, ADHD. It can also be people we root against such as uh, former Bears write-off, Brandon Marshall, who suffers from a borderline uh, personality disorder. It can be people that we don't know very well, such as the late actor, Robin Williams, uh, who had bipolar disorder, and his death was also linked uh, to a form of dementia. Or it can be someone close to home, like a cousin, who suffers from anxiety uh, and depression. So here in the state of Minnesota, uh, patients seeking, uh, seeking providers have to wait on average months and months for service. And with the Affordable Care Act, um, coverage was extended to over 300,000 Minnesota residents. That, with the projected shortage of about 1,000 to 2,000 providers uh, in the Twin Cities, uh, leaves a huge market and those wait times um, are sure to increase in the future. What legislators have tried, to, have tried to do to tackle this problem is by first this year, uh, they have passed the Minnesota Nurse Practice Act 2015. And what this does is it allows uh, nurse practitioners such as my wife to practice without the oversight of a physician or a doctor. Uh, uh, the state has recognized that nurse practitioners uh, are a more, more cost-efficient way of dealing with the problem of mental illness and just uh, general uh, health issues Nurse practitioners are a, a very cost-efficient way versus having an actual doctor position. And according to a, a health affairs journal published, uh, patients prefer nurse practitioners uh, more than they do doctors because of the uh, increased attention, focus, and care that nurse practitioners tend to give to their patients. So today I've tried to identify a problem for you guys, and I feel like we there is a huge, huge gap in this healthcare industry here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, this our solution. Uh, we feel like we have a very specific market that we uh, are targeting uh, with the ability to expand uh, if success uh, allows for that. Meaning we can go and serve maybe you know, children or we can have a psychologist come in and do counseling uh, for different patients. And we just feel like that with the economy, uh, that with the economy the way it is today, that we, uh, we may be able to get a first mover advantage with these laws that just passed and that we have an excellent chance of success. 
So if you don't mind, I'm going to bring my wife over here just in case you have specific questions for her. <laughs> However, I'm ready for any questions. Just wait that. <laughs> sure, go ahead, sir. Uh, how, how many other uh, new businesses like yours do you think will arise in the Twin Cities? It sounds like there needs to be you know, numerous, but what do you know about the market? What's happening with others? Great question. So, actually, as of March 2015, the first uh, nurse practitioner ran clinic opened up. However, it focused just on family health. So, like I said, our, our focus would be on psychiatry and, and mental health. Uh, but the, the nurse practitioner clinic opened under the University of Minnesota, and they were able to use the University of Minnesota's uh, medical record system. And so that is uh, kind of a success story of this new legislation that just passed. Are there different certifications, or, or do you have a different way of yeah, I have a master's degree in psychiatric mental health nursing, so I'm certified to provide psychiatric care um, to anyone over the age of 18. Yes, Do you immediately have to take on the electronic medical record, or aren't you exempt for a while under a small practice act? I thought there was a small practice act exemption. So with the medical record system, we want to be able to provide for the extra 300,000 residents that just uh, received coverage. Uh, and a lot of that is going to be Medicare and Medicaid. And, Medi and I just worry about this. I'm wondering if there is any ability for small practice clinics to get